top five voices that you got a chance to. It doesn't have to be in order. It doesn't have to be just your top five. But if you had to choose five voices that you have done, that you have portrayed, some of the, what are five of your favorites or your top? Baby Murla, because okay. it's iconic for World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Seer Junda, because our energies are merged eternally okay. and game-wise. Others I can break away from, but Seer is when I'm doing performance capture for her, she pulls me into the experience so I can get a chance to experience her. We're the closest in energy. Okay. We're the closest as in Jedi energy and spirit energy. We're the closest in the force energy. And so whenever I am immersed in Seer Junda, I am still discovering myself as Seer emerges. Um, and in uh, across the spectrum would be a video game that I did uh, called Wolfenstein, The New Colossus. I love Wolfenstein. <laughs> and so uh, this character, Grace Walker, mm -hmm. it took place in the 60s. She had an Afro and she was just really badass. She was Pam Greer. Yeah. Um, and so she was, had the, the mouth of, of a sailor, <laughs> but a legitimacy to raise the vibration and still be who she was. Okay. She would breastfeed a baby while smoking a cigarette. <laughs> uh, and so um, she is what I like to call the alter Negro. There's an alter ego and she's okay. the alter Negro. Cause she'll tell you as it is and her battle and her struggle and her desire to raise the vibration um, didn't need to have these poignant words. Right. She just knew um, how to be her and the struggle was real. The struggle was real and it wasn't a black or white struggle. The struggle was real for saving democracy. And whoever wanted to join could join. But keep in mind, this was the 60s. Yeah. So that Black power and that Black Panther energy was there, but very open for anyone who said, I'm standing up for democracy. I'm standing up for that truth. Because she was a truth seeker and a truth, uh, um, a freer. She was there to free and, 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 make, and make this be known and refuse to live under tyranny, no matter what. Right. Um, and she was just badass. She's, she is badass. badass. And I can jump into her any damn day of the week. Um, and the other two, without a doubt, which I still do for people, is Whitney Houston and Oprah Winfrey. My, my impressions of Whitney Houston to Oprah Winfrey. The one social media site I am on, someone convinced me to do it and said, I think you would really enjoy this, Deborah. And I think it would be a platform where you can be in a safe haven and have this great fun um, and make a little money too. Um, and it's cameo. Oh, I was just about to say, because you know what's funny? Um, I also got, I had the privilege to also be able to interview uh, Gary Anthony Williams. And so like, he did, so he, and he so uh, out of the blue, and I was like, we use this till this day. He did like a whole shout out to the Geek Set podcast and Uncle Ruckus voice. And I was like, Oh, this is amazing <laughs> and, but it was like but yeah cameo i love it because people get the you get the embody especially if you do voice work you get to embody a voice or you know somebody and just kind of make somebody's day that way so i can see you love a cameo as i'm doing um you know greetings because mm -hmm. cameo was a greeting site you're doing birthdays and all of this stuff the average cameo they say should be about 90 seconds I average 13 to 20 minutes. <laughs> you get, Cause you love it so much. So you just get into it. <laughs> Improv because sometimes they'll say like, it's my cousin, she loves Gunifa or it's my sister and she loves Oprah. So I'll do a whole, I will improv and do a whole sketch, <laughs> a whole thing. And I'll bring in other people to argue with her. And I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna hit your cameo up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something for my podcast. I'm gonna get you to do something for the podcast on cameo. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, one more person. You got one more left that you was going to. And don't hit me up with cameo. Just let. I have a phone. I could I could do it and then send it to you. You don't need to go to cameo. Why are you paying for it? 
the people that are paying for it are, are going, look, it's a special occasion or it's this. And some folks just go like, look, I want to pay a little bit of money just to talk to you. And I'm like, let's talk. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. That kind of a thing. So it's all good. It's all good. And there are people that constantly um, come back. One person was, he did until I finally said, you know what, you can spend your money elsewhere. You really, I love you and I appreciate you and I respect you. But now you're clinging on and asking questions where you can go on the internet and find some of the stuff, but you, you know, and, and, you know, you don't need to perpetuate it simply to pay me, but he did like 22 cameos, one, and you know, back to back to back to back, 22 cameos. And it was like, you don't really need to do, you, you don't need to do this. You really don't. And it was lovely at first because all the questions were fun and provocative and silly. And then sometimes it would get really, really personal. It was like, you know, that's, it's not about me. It's about giving a greeting. And he never asked for a greeting. It was always, tell me about this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And finally, it was like, let's move forward. Take, take my love with you. Don't move without me because I'm with you. But you don't need to spend money to ask me questions sometimes that are obvious or questions that uh, you already know the answer to, that kind of a thing. But um, for the most part, it's, it's this really fun space to connect to people and sometimes they come to me for spiritual uh, um, reasons and say, listen, I need a pep talk about this or my cousin or sister or brother or aunt or uncle need a pep talk about that. So it's a very safe and loving haven mm -hmm. where I can connect to people and they get the fun silliness of the Oprah Winfrey's and the Whitney Houston's and the Bonifas. Um, so how many did I give you? I thought I gave you five already. You did give me five. I, I, I started thinking, I was like, wait, she did. Cause you said two at the same time. So I do apologize for that. Yeah, no worries, no worries. So the last thing that we generally do is a recommendation. It could be something that you're reading, watching, listening to, something that you are just into, but something that you think that our listeners and our viewers should check out. Hmm. I can't say that there's anything I'm legitimately into, um, out you know out in the out in that out in that world, um, because all the stuff that I that I'm into really is here. It's I have two aquariums, I have eight species of tarantulas, and I have fourteen scorpions and a dog. Yeah. And so I love you know that's the other geeky aspect of me. Um, and one of my scorpions just had babies had scorplings. And so, you know, that's the geeky stuff that I'm into. Um, I'm trying to think, and, I, and I, I'd be hard pressed to think if there's something that I'm into on the outside, because for me, nothing ever lasts long. It's, it's almost like the changing of the seasons. And once they change, the leaves are never the same. They're not the same leaves because they've been new leaves that come on. You know, it's not like those leaves die and they shrivel up, but they stay on the tree and then they they bloom again. Or this flower dies and then the same flower blooms. It's, it's not that case for the most part. And so I'm very clear to release stuff out into the universe for whatever experience God has coming here. So releasing is one of those things that I do very easily, whether it be with clothes or jewelry or money or furniture, it's letting stuff go in order for this new experience to come in so I never hold on to anything but for so long in my life even the things that I watch so I don't really binge watch I binge watch some stuff mm -hmm. but if I have to take that course and go binge watching um there is a series that that on YouTube it was on YouTube Red and it didn't come back um and it was highly touted and it was brilliant and amazing and it's quirky and it's dark and it's violent and I loved it it was a YouTube series called Wayne. Okay. And it was about a young guy. Um, I don't know if it was Boston, but it was on the Eastern seaboard, New England, well, some of the, one of the New England states. And it was about his awkwardness and his desire in this awkwardness to be like Holden Caulfield from Catcher in the Rye, which is I'm out there to help people. But how he interpreted it was to bust some ass. Yeah, I'm and he did not care how much he got beat for it. It was just a part of his principle. And so he was always encountering violent situations, but it didn't matter to him how brutally he was beaten. It was his principle of protecting others. 
this principle of standing up, no matter how big that person was. And so he moves through his journey and it is a coming of age story at the same time. Um, but it's so well written, it's so well done. I was mesmerized. I watched every single episode back to back to back until I watched like eight, eight hours of television, nine hours of television. I did that with that. And I did that with the first and second season of Cobra Kai. Ah, yeah, Cobra Kai was good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so those were the two things that I can think of the last time. And those now it's been like a year, year and a half, two yeah. years that I binged watched like that. Okay. 